Good morning everybody, uh, how are you all doing? It's James here, welcome to another video. So, uh, the 10 album link challenge. Uh, lots of people seem to be jumping on this, uh, it's been fantastic and uh, really enjoying seeing what people are coming up with and uh, I've decided to do a sequel to my original video and do a response to myself. <coughs> um, I was aware when I did my video that I, I kind of cut a few corners and I, there was a few bumps in the road I think I described. Um, my um, my video had a few kind of kinks in it, not kinks the band, but you know kinks where I made a kind of jump that was perhaps a bit too big. And when I saw some of the responses, I realised there were people who were being more strict with themselves than I had been. So um, just to recap, what you do is you link together ten albums, you find a link, and then you after the tenth album you go back and show the first album again. And the route that I chose in my video was to look at the personnel who'd been on the records. And uh, I think for both of my attempts, I sort of managed to do it about 80%, but I made a couple of kind of leaps. So um, when I saw a couple of the responses, I mean, there's been some great, great, great responses of all kinds. People didn't just do the personnel route. They, they, they did it with album covers and, you know, all kinds of different things, song titles, absolutely amazing, inventive stuff which has come out. But um, I thought I'd go back and have another proper attempt at doing a 10 album link challenge where the albums do link properly. So you get a person on one album and they are on the next album and they are on the next album and there's no sort of awkward leaps. So uh, I put this together last night and I think I've got it this time. So let's see anyway. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start with this record. This is uh, Town and Country uh, by Humble Pie. And uh, this, I think this is a reissue. Right, so Humble Pie, um, Steve Marriott, Peter Frampton, and a, and a drummer by the name of Jerry Shirley is on this record. Now, I knew Jerry Shirley's name from a documentary I'd seen about Sid Barrett. I knew he played on this record. This is uh, The Mad Cat Laughs. He plays on, I think he plays on No Man's Land and Here I Go. And he plays on two songs on the record, uh, but Jerry Shirley yeah, is playing the drums on two songs on the Mad Cat Laughs uh, by Sid. Now, <clears throat> we hit a little sort of Pink Floyd patch now, obviously, you know. It's hard to link Sid Barrett to anybody else, but <clears throat> of course Sid Barrett uh, was one of the founding members of Pink Floyd. There he is, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the steering wheel. And um, this is the band's first album, of course, Piper at the Gates of Dawn and uh, Sid Barrett wrote most of the songs for that album. Now also on this album we have a certain gentleman by the name of Roger Waters and Roger Waters hasn't made that many solo records in his career but he's made a few. This being one of them, this is uh, Radio Chaos uh, which came out in, I think it came out in 1988 maybe? Very strange concept album, 87 sorry. Now on this record, uh, he had a band, and I thought there was a picture of the band. Maybe there was a poster. Anyway, um, in the band, he had to replace David Gilmore, you know, in the family circle that was Pink Floyd. And uh, on this particular record, he worked with a guitarist uh, called Andy Fairweather Lowe. And this is one of his solo albums. Now Andy Fairweather Lowe had been in a band called The Amen Corner in the 60s but then he went on to have a very long solo career, you know, he made lots of albums on his own, he also guested on lots of records but he'd been on Radio Chaos uh, in the 80s and this was a solo album he'd made a few years before uh, in the 1970s. <clears throat> okay, so this album was produced and engineered by uh, Glyn Johns, who was an absolutely legendary um, record producer, he produced all sorts of things. So this leak was fairly straightforward. The most famous album, arguably, that he ever produced was this one. This is uh, The Who and Who's Next. Actually, uh, Glyn Johns is the associate producer on this record. It was produced by The Who. Glyn Johns is credited as the associate producer, I assume, because Pete Townsend wanted to have his fingers firmly in the um, production pie. And we of course know that Pete Townsend has made a few very good um, solo albums, this being one of them. This is uh, All the Best Cowboys Have Chinese Eyes, which was a critically panned album which came out in the 80s. I'm very fond of it. Quick shout out to Jeff Party for turning me on to this record. This came out in 1982. Right, this album 
So this is another production link. This album was produced by um, Chris Thomas. Uh, he was another legendary producer. You know, he produced um, Nevermind the Bollocks by the Sex Pistols, you know, all sorts of amazing things. I think he produced The Pretenders. But <clears throat> he produced uh, Back to the Egg by Paul McCartney and Wings, uh, which is their album from 1979, um, which was seen as a, a bit of a failure, really, even though, you know, it did... It did reasonable business, but it wasn't a very big album by, uh, uh, in McCartney's terms. Now, on this record, famously, there is a track called uh, The Orchestra Theme, where Paul basically uh, just got loads of famous musicians into the studio and they just played this big, uh, this big rock instrumental track. And um, there were quite a few big famous guys in that band, one of them being John Bonham, the drummer from... Led Zeppelin, and here we have uh, Led Zeppelin 4. Now, Led Zeppelin consisted of four men, as we know, Robert Plant, John Bonham, um, Jimmy Page, and John Paul Jones. Now, John Paul Jones, before he joined Led Zeppelin, he had been a session man extraordinaire, but he'd also been an arranger as well. And one of the albums that he worked on uh, as an arranger in the 1960s uh, was this one by the Rolling Stones. This is uh, their Satanic Majesty's Request. And this is where we come to the end of our journey. Now this is a reissue and he's not actually credited, but I have cross-referenced this to make sure that I am correct and it's, it's confirmed in many different sources, okay? So on Satanic Majesty's Request, um, there is one track and it's the track In Another Land, <clears throat> which was a Bill Wyman track, I think, and Brian Jones was not available in the studio that day to play the guitar, so Bill Wyman drafted in a friend of his. That friend uh, was Steve Marriott. Steve Marriott played guitar on that track, and he's also credited uh, with backing vocals as well. Now, Steve Marriott, famously, was in the band Humble Pie, and that brings us round in a circle. Hopefully this time with no bumps in the road. Okay, folks, that is my final word on the subject. Thanks so much to everybody who's still jumping on this thread. It's great fun. I've learned so much uh, from all of you. Fantastic stuff. Keep it going. See you soon. Bye-bye.